Now for this part of the question, we've got to find the domain of the inverse function of f of x. And we found out earlier that f of x was 1 over 2x minus 1, where x was any real number that was greater than the half. And we've also found that the inverse function of f of x was 1 plus x over 2x. So how are we going to find the domain then of this inverse function? Well, it relies on this principle that if you've got a graph of y equals, say, f of x, the inverse function is always related to it. It is always a reflection in this diagonal, the diagonal y equals x. Now, that means that if I was to sketch the graph of f of x, which we'll just do now, it's a reciprocal based function and it's only valid for x greater than a half. And do you notice that when x is a half, the denominator here comes to zero because you get two times a half, which is one, one take away one is zero. And if you divide anything by zero, you get an undefined value. It approaches this asymptote, which I'll just mark in with this fine dotted line there. So this graph of f of x is going to look something like this. Being a reciprocal base graph, it's going to approach that asymptote and it's going to approach the x-axis, never crossing it as x gets larger. The full graph, if we had this x not greater than a half, if it was allowed to be less than a half, it would look like this as well. Okay, but we're only concerned with this part of the graph. This is the graph then of y equals f of x. Now, the point is that the range of this graph, y equals f of x, under reflection in y equals x, now becomes the domain of the inverse function. If I was to sketch the inverse function in as being a reflection of this graph here, I would find that I would get something looking like this. Just coming, coming down here, it's approached the y-axis, comes down through here, goes through this point here, and then just carries on down like so. A mirror image then of y equals f of x. Let's just mark this in as y equals the inverse function of x. So the range, as I said, of the red graph, which is any value of y greater than zero, now gets mirrored in y equals x, and it now becomes the domain for the green graph, the inverse function. So can you see that the domain, what we're being asked for, is essentially that the domain is any value of x, which is a real number, but that real number has to be greater than zero. So x has to be greater than zero. So I hope that's given you some idea how I approach it from a graphical point of view. All right?